To most of us, television shows are just entertainment, designed to dazzle us with bizarre plot lines. Some of the best loved shows over the last few decades have focused on the future at some point, but more often than not, their predictions are way off the mark. That being said, every now and then writers have been right, and boy, does that leave us shocked. From presidential elections to memoirs by suspected killers, prepare to be awestruck at what you're about to see. Back in the year 2000, the idea of businessman Donald Trump running for president was so out there that it didn't even seem remotely possible. And that's why The Simpsons, aka the cartoon that's best known for bizarre and unrealistic plots, dedicated an entire episode to the subject. The episode titled Bart to the Future saw Bart get a sneaky look into his later years, and what he sees is less than pretty. Uber smart Lisa has made it to the top of the political totem pole, having just been elected America's first female president. The only trouble is that the guy before her left such a mess for her to clean up that she's getting off to a rocky start. Amazingly, the previous president was none other than our favorite orange-skinned dude of the moment, Donald Trump. We'd say that it was spookily clairvoyant, but this one came out of left field. None of us expected the hotel owner to run for president when he did, let alone win. If it's not something that we can get our heads around now, there's no way that the likes of Matt Groening would have possibly viewed this episode as anything more than a dystopian fantasy. Star Trek is one of those shows that never gets old, and not just because they're constantly making updated versions of it. The OG series starring William Shatner as the dashing yet strong Captain Kirk is hailed as one of the best sci-fi shows ever. Of course, the show focused on a world way into the future that was pretty sensationalized, but at times it was also spot on. In 1967, an episode entitled Tomorrow is Yesterday showed Kirk, Spock, and the rest of the gang going back in time. Lieutenant Yehura picks up a rogue radio message from NASA detailing the upcoming moon landing. As we all know, NASA did send a mission to the moon just two years later, beating the Russians to it. Interestingly, Yuhura's intercepted message detailed the events happening on a Wednesday, which turned out to be the very same day Buzz Aldrin and crew left Cape Kennedy. It might sound like a mystery, but in reality, the writers would have just made an educated guess. Space travel was prominently discussed around that time, and it wouldn't have taken a rocket scientist to know that it was going to happen soon. Quantum Leap is a sci-fi lover's dream. For those of you who aren't familiar with the show that ran from 1989 to 1993, it focused on the time-traveling exploits of Sam Beckett and his holographic buddy Al. Each episode we saw Sam having to help fix the life of a different person before he could successfully leap into a different place and time. Despite having the opportunity to make quite a lot of predictions concerning the future, the show never really hit the mark on a lot of guesses. All but one, that is. In the episode All Americans, Sam is tasked with helping a high school football star stop before he messes things up beyond redemption. Later on in the episode, Al is watching the 1996 Super Bowl, where the Pittsburgh Steelers are down by three points. Amazingly, the Steelers did reach 1996's Super Bowl and lost to the Dallas Cowboys. You guessed it, by three points. Coincidence or pure psychic intuition? We're on the fence about this one. Spooks captivated audiences in the UK and America when it first aired in 2002. The series, called MI5 in the States, focused on the thrilling lives of English special intelligence agents. Each episode had viewers on the edge of their seats right up until the series concluded in 2011, but season four would resonate with the world for a dark reason. One of the major plot lines of that season saw our team investigating a terror cell that had big plans to let off bombs in central London. It was filmed in the spring of 2005. No one, let alone the cast and crew, could have predicted just how real the show would get. Just a few short weeks after production wrapped, London was devastated when four radical Islamic terrorists targeted public transport systems during the busy morning rush hour. Three homemade devices were detonated on underground trains and a fourth and final bomb exploded on a double-decker bus in Tavistock Square. 56 people tragically lost their lives that day, with a further 784 people left injured. Producers battled with whether to release the episodes or not, but ultimately decided to air them the following September with a disclaimer. When it comes to comedy, Chris Rock is one of those comedians that can broach controversial subjects and get away with it. Although he's not as high profile as he used to be, the star had a good run in the 90s with his HBO series, The Chris Rock Show. One 1999 episode featured Rock talking about infamous athlete turned jailbird, OJ Simpson. Simpson was embroiled in what many dubbed the trial of the century after his ex-wife Nicole Brown was found murdered outside of her Hollywood home alongside a male friend. We all know the story. OJ always maintained that he didn't do it, but it all seemed a little suspicious. 
gracious. At one point, Chris Rock joked to the audience that OJ had paid him a visit to discuss an upcoming book he had in the works, called I Didn't Kill My Wife, but if I did, here's how I'd do it. The skit went down a storm with viewers, mainly because of how it sounded so ridiculous that we all knew it would never happen. How wrong we were. Fast forward eight years, and Simpson released his autobiography. The tell-all story was titled, If I Did It. Was Simpson taking direct notes from Chris Rock, or was this one of those weird Twilight Zone moments that only the gifted could predict? Scrubs will forever go down in the history as one of the best medical shows of all time. Sure, there's ER, but when it comes to belly laughs and the odd happy tear, Scrubs reigns supreme. Cast your mind back to the mid-2000s when the world at large was trying to hunt down Al-Qaeda leader Osama Bin Laden. Bin Laden was the most wanted man in the world, but for a long time, no one could figure out where he was. All of the world's top government agencies were on the case, but it took them almost 10 years to finally catch up with him. So, how does Scrubs fit into this? In 2006, the episode His Story IV saw JD trying to impress his friends by reeling off facts about the Iraq war. It doesn't really go down well, and the rest of the gang makes it clear that they aren't interested in discussing the whole affair. However, the janitor does chime in to suggest the military should be looking for Bin Laden in Pakistan. Sure enough, in 2011, the terrorist cell leader was eventually discovered in a secret hiding place in Pakistan. Given that the janitor isn't exactly known for his intellectual prowess, it's a bit of a shocker that the writers inadvertently knew the whereabouts of Bin Laden the entire time, when the US military didn't have a clue. Back at the start of 2013, Edward Snowden probably figured out he'd end up as one of the biggest fugitives in American history. Snowden, a former CIA employee, leaked information about the National Security Agency's surveillance program and boy, did it stir quite the storm. He eventually had no choice but to get out of the country. To this day, he lives in Moscow, Russia and hasn't been back to the States. That we're aware of. Prior to these events unfolding, CBS's Person of Interest released an episode that is shockingly similar to Snowden's tale. Titled No Good Deed, the episode told the story of Henry Peck, a young man working for the NSA. Peck discovers that the organization is running a shady surveillance program that goes against everything he stands for, so he swiftly outs them and then ends up having to go on the lam. The details are the exact same. In fact, it's frightening how similar these stories are despite CBS's show airing years before Snowden did what he did. Did Snowden see the story and become inspired by the flashy drama? Probably not, but this is too similar to be a stroke of luck. There's something otherworldly going on here. Most people like to think that Friends was Matthew Perry's first major role, but they're wrong. In fact, it was the 1987 Fox series Second Chance. Perry played the part of Jazz Russell, but it was canceled just after one season. The show was set in the future and saw Perry's character die of a hovercraft accident on July 29th, 2011. His older self, played by Keel Martin, waits in heaven to be told by St. Peter if he's allowed in or not. When he's there, he randomly meets Libyan leader Colonel Gaddafi, who reveals he was shot dead in the last few days. It's so random a date for writers to have picked that they couldn't have possibly known that Colonel Gaddafi would really meet his grisly fate that same year. Not only did they predict the date, but they were also spot on on how he died. The controversial leader was killed by rebel fighters armed with guns. For a series that didn't last very long at all, that's an impressive, jaw-droppingly accurate prediction. It's always good to reminisce about Parks and Rec, isn't it? In an episode from the final season of the show called Ron and Jamie, writers decided to look ahead at the summer of 2017. Everyone decides to pay Lucy a visit in Chicago, and she happily shows them around the Windy City, describing how the atmosphere has been buzzing since the Cubs won the World Series. Well, you guessed it, the Cubs really did win the World Series in 2016. As the episode aired in 2015, there was absolutely no indication that the team was going to go all the way. In fact, they were so down and out on their luck that the Cubs hadn't been featured in a World Series game for 108 years. The odds of them getting to the finals were slim to none, but hey, Parks and Rec spoke it into reality. That's some next level stuff. The Lone Gunman enjoyed limited success as a spin-off from The X-Files, although remains highly revered as a cult classic. Despite wanting to be remembered for its off-the-wall plot lines, the show ended up lingering on in television history for a spine-chilling reason. An early 2001 episode showed the three main characters trying to derail a government conspiracy aimed at boosting gun sales across America. The attack would involve hijacking a commercial flight and having it crash into the World Trade Center. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? The episode aired in 2001, and as we all know, the 9-11 attacks didn't happen until September of the same year. 
If you would have told the cast and crew that six months after airing those events would transpire in real life, they wouldn't have believed you. Neither would we. It just goes to show that some of the worst ideas writers can think of can be more realistic than any of us like to admit. Is our future really that predictable that these shows can see it coming from a mile away? Or are some of these writers better suited for crystal balls than TV studios? Who knows, but even we have to admit that some of these predictions are so close to the knuckle that it's impossible to be just coincidences. What do you think? Was it just luck or divine intervention? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more great content like this. Thanks for watching.